الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم. Let's all begin the dua on the screen إن شاء الله. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كيف حالكم الحمد لله as part of the Quran intensive, we also give you a tour of Cape Town's mosques, inshallah. So this week, welcome to Masjid Al-Quds, alhamdulillah. Allah. Alhamdulillah, it was nice to go to different venues, nice and refreshing. Uh, lots of work, but alhamdulillah. Okay, bismillah. Did you have homework to do? Eh? No homework. Okay, this bismillah. You can take out your homework. We're going to check it now, inshallah. You can take out your homework in the Okay, let's have a quick recap, inshallah, recap. In the first lesson, we learned about Al-Kalima. What's Al-Kalima again? Al-Kalima is the word, any Arabic word. So we said Al-Kalima is divided into how many parts? Three. Three parts. What are the three? Come on, all together, Bismillah. Again, Ismun, Fi'lun, Harfun. What does this mean? It means that every... Word in Arabic is either ismun or fi'lun or harfun. There is no fourth. It's either one of these three. What is an ismun again? And was the short name? What was the long name? Person, place, thing, idea, adjective, adverb, and more. That's an ismun. A person like Muhammad or boy or place like. Uh, Cape Town, the city, thing like chair, desk, idea, like love, justice, democracy, adjective like tall, beautiful, adverb like quickly, slowly, and so on. All of those are in one category called ismun. What's a fi'lun? A fi'lun is a verb, good. A doing word, a verb. And what's a harfun? A particle, like a small word. So it doesn't make sense unless something comes after it to complete the meaning. So our focus a lot is going to be on ismun. And in sarf you'll, you'll see you'll focus a lot on fi'lun, on fi'l. So our focus for now is, is going to be on, on the ism. So we said an ism has something called a hal. An ism had something called a hal. This is lesson number what? Number two or number three? Lesson number two we said the ism has a hal. What are the names of the hal? Okay. Again. Raf'un, Nasbun, Jarrun. So the name of the hal is going to be Raf'un, Nasbun, Jarrun. What do we mean by this? We mean that every ism in the whole Quran, in all of hadith, in all of the books written, every ism must be in one of these three hals. It can't be in two hals at the same time. It can't be no hal. It must either be raf'un or nasbun or jarrun. Okay. So our first step, our first step is to try to just see where is it raf'un, where is it nasbun, and where is it jarrun. Our next step later on, inshallah, is going to, be, is going to ask the question, why? Why raf'un, why nasbun, why jarrun, what's the difference? So the first step is just understanding when it's raf'un. So if you see the word rasul, how will you know it's raf'un? 
If you see the word Rasul, how, how will you know the word Rasul is Raf'un? That's going to end with what? A Dhamma. And uh, oh, and un. For example, if I had the word Rasulun, if I have a single ism, only speaking about single ism for now, if I have the word Rasulun and it ends with a un or a uh, I know the hal is what? Raf'un. How do I make it into Nasbun? Rasulun becomes what? Nasb is Rasulun becomes what? Rasulan. Good. And Ar Rasulu becomes what? Ar Rasulla. So Nasb is Ah and An. Rasulan and Ar Rasulla. And we also mentioned last week, and you see the spelling there, we just, if it's An, we add an Alif. That's just a spelling rule. If it's An, we add an Alif in Arabic. Now I want to make the word Rasulun and Ar Rasulu into Jarrun. How do I make Rasulun into Jar? Rasulin and Ar Rasulu. Ar Rasuli. Must be easy now. Must be familiar. Must be old work now, inshallah. Good. Then last week, what did we learn? Just cast your mind back a week. I know it's been a long busy week, but cast your mind back to last Sunday. What did we do on past Sunday? What was the new lesson? Definite and indefinite. What was definite in Arabic? Who remembers Ma'arifa all together? Ma'arifa and indefinite? Nakira. Ma'arifa and Nakira. How do I recognize something that is definite? Al and at the end? No tanween. Al, no tanween. And something which is indefinite? No al plus tanween. No al plus tanween. So the new lesson was this last week. Al, definite. So if it's al qalam, I do translate it. What's a qalam again? Pen. So al qalam is what? The pen. And if it's indefinite, it will be a something indefinite. So Al Qalam would become what? Qalam. It will be Qalamun, which is A pen. A pen. All with me so far? Easy. Okay. Before we get to the next lesson, inshallah. Oh, this is the easy one. This, this we did last week. Okay. Let's take out your homework first and let's just check your homework and see what's happening there. What did you have for homework? Let me just see. You had worksheet one point three. Okay. So take it one point three. Find one point three. I give you permission to look at the person next to you, look at the worksheet. You know a special dua you make for them? Look at the work. If it's blank, brother, just make it to our favor. That brother is very busy. I'll give him barakah in his time, inshallah. No. Because if yours is blank also, the hadith says that the angel makes the dua for you back also. For you the same. <laughs> so it's okay. No. Bismillah. I did give you an answer sheet, but we'll go through it verbally, inshallah. So all we're going to do is we're just going to say... Okay, it's actually quite easy. Let me just see. Okay, let's do it verbally, inshallah. We're just going to read. We're going to read the Ma'rifah column and the Nakira column. So we're going to say Al Muslimi Muslimin. All together? Muslimi Muslimin. Next one? Al Baladu Baladun. Next one? Al Bahru Bahrun. Next one? Al Qalbu Qalbun. Next one? Al Qamaru Qamarun. Next one. An Nahra Nahran. Next one. Al Shajaratu Al Shajaratan. Next one. An Nasu Nasun. Next one. Al Ardu Ardun. Next one. Al Amalu Amalun. Next one. Al Alimu Alimun. Next one. Al Jannati Jannatin. 
if you we might have struggled with this, maybe this, the spelling or the joining or something. So we gave you a an answer sheet this week, I think. That should be. Do you give you answer sheet? Yes, this is an answer sheet here. For this week, inshallah. But you don't have to mark it now, you can mark it for homework, inshallah. But the concept is simple. What's the concept? Very simple concept. To make something definite, I add alif lam al and I take away tanwin. And to make it indefinite, nakira, I take away the al and I add tanwin. Simple. Inshallah. Next one. Are there any questions about this worksheet? Before I carry on. Any questions about the worksheet? Is the live working? Still working. No questions. No WhatsApp questions. Okay. Let's take out worksheet number from last week. Worksheet number 1 1.4. 1.4. This worksheet is still one column missing, but we'll do the wrong col last column today. So we asked in this worksheet, 1.4, worksheet 1.4. We have the word al-Muslimi. So the first thing you must tell me is, what's the hal of al-Muslimi? The answer is there, jarrun. And definiteness is ma'rifah or nakira? Ma'rifa. So baladun, hal? Raf'un. And definiteness? Nakira. Next one, al-Bahra. Nasbun. Definiteness? Ma'rifa. Qalbun. Raf'un. Definiteness, nakira. So nakira just means indefinite, that's all. No al, indefinite, which is equal to nakira. Al qamari, jarrun, ma'rifa. Al nahra, nasbun, ma'rifa. Shajaratun, raf'un, nakira. Al nasa, nasbun, ma'rifa. Ayatan, nasbun, Nakira. Amalun. Raf'un. Nakira. Al Alimi. Jarrun. Ma'rifa. Jannadin. Jarrun. Nakira. Okay. You'll get the answer sheet, answer sheet inshallah when you finish the last, the last column. What else was for homework? Who remembers? Anything else for homework? What else? The last two kuls. Okay, let's get them inshallah. The last two, two kuls. Your homework was to take Suratul Falak. Take Suratul Falak. And what do you have to what did you have to identify? Where is the ism and what is the hal? So this Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falak. So in that first ayah, Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falak, where is the, where is the ism? Okay, the word rabb is the ism, but there's no sign of the ism, so we leave it out for now. Where is one you can see is definitely an ism? Al-falak. How do you know it's an ism? Because isms generally have, one of the signs is that often have an al. So that al-falak is going to be an, an ism. Al-falak is going to be an ism. What hal is that ism in? Jarrun. Jarrun. So that ism is going to be in, in jarrun. Next thing. Min sharri ma khalaq. So there is an ism, yes, sharr, but you can't see it, so I'm leaving it out, inshallah. There is an ism, yes, sharr, which means evil. 
but I'll leave it out now because it doesn't have the sign. So not every ism has an al or tanwin or tamarbuta. Some ism don't have a sign, and you'll learn why later on, inshallah. But shar is an ism, but we'll leave it out for now. Min shar wa min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab. Which one? Ghasiqin. How do you know it's an ism? The tanwin there. So what hal is ghasiqin in? Jarrun. I or in equals Next one. وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْأُقَدْ Which one? النَّفَّاثَات النَّفَّاثَات You can say it's a leaf. Lam. It's a tricky one, but what's a hal? Jarrun. Jarrun. Why? Jarrun. For now you can say the i, but not actually true. But we'll come back to it again, inshallah. Jarrun. And uqad? Uqad. Al-uqad. Also ism. What hal is it in? Jarun, good. وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدْ حَاسِدٍ What's the hal? Jarun. Okay. Next one. Last surah. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Which one? النَّاسِ Rabb is the ism, yes. But النَّاسِ is one that has a sign on. There's a leaf lamb. What hal is النَّاسِ in? Al-Nas is going to be Jarrun. Malikin Nas. Which one? Malik is Islam, but it has no sign. Because Malik means the king. But it doesn't have a L, doesn't have a Tanwin, so we leave it for now. Al-Nas has Alif Lam and Islam. Al-Nas in Jarrun, good. Ilahin Nas. Ilah is also an Islam, but we leave it for now. Al-Nas, what hal is in? Jarrun. Wa min sharri al-waswas il-khannas. Where is the Islam? Al-waswas and Al-khannas Alif lam, alif lam Al-waswas, what's the hal? Jarrun Al-khannas, jarrun Al-ladhi yuwaswisu fi suduri al-nas Al-nas, jarrun Min al-jinnati wal-nas Al-jinnati, what's the hal? Jarrun And al-nas, jarrun So lots of jar isms here Happening, inshallah. In a few months, you'll know why. In a few months, you'll know. You'll know why. So do it also, but there's no sign. So I'll leave it for now. Okay. Are you ready for new work? Everybody okay there? Can you see the screen? Is it a bit small? Can we make it a bit bigger? Can I move this in? What you'll notice is that at the beginning now, we all just, we're going we're gonna to four qualities of an ism. So what's the first quality you learned about an ism? In lesson two. Hal. In other words, you can look at the ism and you can tell me the hal. You with me? So if I say al-muslimu, if you look at the ism, can you tell me the hal? Rahun. If I say musliman, can you tell, tell me the hal? Nasbun. Good. So the first quality of ism we learned is the hal. What's the second quality? The, definite, the definiteness. Either indefinite or definite. So if I say al-muslimu, definite or indefinite? Al-muslimu. Definite. Because there's a al. If I say musliman, indefinite. Because there's no al and there's tanwin. So we learn two qualities. So how many are left? Two more. There's four altogether. We learn two. There's two more. So today we do number three. And next week we do number four, inshallah. And you have the four qualities of an ism. Next thing is going to be the new concept, the gender of an ism. The gender of an ism. You, again, you, we will send you the notes and we gave you 
I also gave you Nahu notes, so that you can just focus, inshallah, and understand the lesson. So in English, in English, we have sort of three genders. We have the masculine gender and the feminine gender, and we have like a neutral, let's say like a, a neutral reference. A neutral reference. For example, a chair, a book, and so on. So if I refer to a boy, what do I, what do I refer to him as? I refer to him as a he. Like if I say, I saw the boy, I saw him, or he is doing this. So if I see, refer to a boy or to a man or some, somebody who is a male, I refer to the person as a he because it's a, in the male category. What about if I refer to something like a school or the moon or a book or a pen? What do I refer to it as? When you refer to like a book, what do you say? I read the book. He is good, she is good, or it is good? It is good. So when you refer in English to an inanimate thing, we use the word it. You with me? And when I, when I refer to a female, and then what? She or her. For example, a girl, a woman, and so on. I refer to it as a she. So the first thing I want to say in English, for a moment, is process. When you refer to a male thing, we have a male category, or him. A female category, she or her. And an in-between, neutral, inanimate category, we call it it. You with me? Now in Arabic, it's interesting. In Arabic, there's no it. There's no it in Arabic. So if there's no it, how much is left? There's only she. You with me? It's he or, or she. And some other languages as well. I don't know. I think Portuguese as well and some other languages don't have a neutral gender. So for example, the word for school, for example, what school in Arabic? Madrasa. School actually be a feminine word. What's moon in Arabic? Qamar. Qamar will be a masculine word. What's kitab? I mean, what's book? <laughs> book is kitab. Kitab will be a Masculine word. So the first thing I want to say about gender is there's only two genders in Arabic. Male or female. Even for inanimate things, I must give it a, either a he or a she. You with me? I'll give you an example. In Arabic, huwa, huwa is he and hiya is she. So if I, if, I, if I refer to the book, I will call the book huwa or hiya. It's a male, I'll call the book huwa. If I refer to a madrasa, I'll say huwa or hiya. Hiya. There's only two. Huwa or hiya. There's no, there's no third one. Obviously, when I render it back into English, I'll say it. But in the Arabic language, it's only he or she. Okay. So do you understand the concept? It's like a weird concept, but it's... Uh, there's no it. You must just call the thing he or she. So everything, whether I'm speaking about the qalam, a qalam will be a... A male thing. So I'll refer to as here or here, hua or here, hua because it's a male thing. Okay. So let me give you how do you know the gender. So now I'm going to give you rules on how to know the gender of an ism so you can look at the ism and you'll know, you'll know the gender. Okay. For now, like the basic rule is simple. If you're not going to remember anything else from today, you can remember this, inshallah. If a word ends with that letter, what's that letter called? That's call, called what? Ta marbuta. Ta marbuta. Ta marbuta is a closed ta with two dots on top. Not the open, the open bowl with two dots inside. It's a closed ta with two dots, two dots on, on top. It's called ta, marbu, uh, ta marbuta. Because rabata, rabata actually means to tie it together. So what happened to the ta? The two ends came together and got tied on top. So it's called marbuta. Because it has been closed. So for example, the word madrasa. Can you see the word madrasa? Ends with what? Ta marbuta. Then it's going to be feminine. You with me? So generally, in Arabic, when you see ta marbuta, you say, you say the word is feminine. And if it doesn't end with ta marbuta, generally speaking, Say it's what? Masculine. That's the introductory rule. Let's apply the rule first. Apply the rule. 
So the word, the first one. Can you see we have two columns here? On the left we have feminine, and the right we have masculine. So let's go. Madrasa. Which I must go to? Feminine. Good. How about kitabun? Which I must go to? Masculine. How about muslimun? If there's no tamar buta for now, we're going to say masculine. How about muslimatun? Feminine. How do I say that word muslimatun? If I stop, if I read through, I say muslimatun. And if I don't read through, I say what? Muslima. Therefore, many of your names will be ah names. You will have a Sabira and a Jamila and a Khadija and a Radiya because of you have a Tamar Buddha at your names. Who of you have Tamar Buddha at your names? Raise your hands quickly. My, almost half of you, more than half of you have Tamar Buddha because Tamar Buddha is a feminine name. No. There are some exceptions like Hamza. Hamza, Tamar Buddha, that's exceptions, inshallah. Muslim. Next one, Al Jannatu. Masculine or feminine? Feminine. Al Qamaru. Masculine. Good. Easy. Easy so far. But now we can use Arabic terms. Feminine in Arabic is called Mu'annath. All said together. Again, Mu'annath. One more time. Mu'annath. And masculine is called Mu'dhakkar. All together. Mu'dhakkar. Again. One more time. So now all you must tell me is Madrasatun, Mu'annathun, or Mu'dhakkarun. Madrasatun, what is it? All together. Mu'annathun. Good. Kitabun, Mu'dhakkarun, or Mu'annathun. Good. Muslimun. Mudakkarun. Next one. Muslimatun. Muannathun. Good. Next one. Al Jannatu. Muannathun. Next one. Al Qamaru. Mudakkarun. Easy so far. Can I? One level up. Ready? Okay. You sure? Basic rule. So I'm saying if, if, if you don't remember everything, because last year I didn't actually teach the other rule, I just stopped here. I just left with the basic rule and I said, let's carry on. But this year I felt, mashallah, such a bright class. I'm not speaking about anything about the bad about the last class, I'm just saying. So I'm going to give you the whole rule now, inshallah. I'm going to give you the entire rule, inshallah. One second, inshallah. Okay, so what I want to do, inshallah, for now, is I want to just take out the worksheet from this week, inshallah. I'll, I'll explain a little now. And I only wanted to do what? I only wanted to go through this worksheet here. And I only wanted to do only one thing. Just identify the words with Tamar Buta, nothing else. Just identify the words with Tamar Buta, then add feminine and add Tamar Buta. What? What about? No. 
Okay, Bismillah. You know the rule if you're a Mizan student, eh? <coughs> if you're if you're, if you're a Mizan student, then you and your entire extended family, friends, colleagues can never have a nikah at Mount View on Sundays. <laughs> That's the rule of being a student, okay? Otherwise, we're gonna deregister you. <laughs> so you're not allowed to have a nikah at Mount View on Sundays, inshallah. Uh, no, Bismillah. Okay, one slide. One slide is gonna give you the whole feminine story. There was a short version. I'm gonna give you the long version. Short version, I'm going to give you the long version. What are we doing? Gender. You with me? Gender. How many genders are there? Two. Give me the names. What's, what's uh, feminine? Mu'annathun and masculine? Mudhakkarun. So there's two. So in other words, I want to... I'm going to show you a tool now that if you look at any Arabic word, you can sort of reliably say whether it's mudhakkar or mu'annath. You with me? So the rule is this, simple. The rule is that the default, the default is that we regard the word to be masculine, mudhakkar, except in the following cases. You with me? Except in the following cases. So what's the one case I gave you already? Tamar buta. So in other words, if it has a tamar buta at the end, then we say the word is mu'annath. Give me an example of a word like that. Madrasatun. Madrasatun. So you understand the rule so far? The default is that the word is considered to be more except in the following cases. One case, if it ends with a ta marbuta. And that's the most common one. So if you remember that, that's enough. But let's add the others. Or it ends with this. What is that there? That's a ya with no dots. That's a ya with no dots. Actually, an alif. For example, if I write the word taqwa. You can see taqwa, I don't read that there. Taqwa. It ends with no, or huda. If it ends with ya, yeah, with no dots. And then it's also going to be what? Mu'annath. So the default rule is the word is masculine male, except if it ends with ta or that ya with no, with no dots. Let's call aliful maksura, but don't worry about the name. Or if it ends with this. What's that there? An alif with a hamza. If it ends with that also, it's feminine. For example, the word bayda. Taqwa means obviously piety. Bayda means something which is white. Bayda, white. You with me so far? So what's the rule? The default is what? The default is what? Masculine except when it ends with what? Tamar bulta. That ya with no dots, and that alif with a hamza. That last one is called alifu mamduda. I don't worry about the name. Or, if a word is a female name, for example, the word Maryam, does Maryam end with any of those three? No. It ends with a meme, but obviously it's a female name, so I must, I can't say hua for Maryam, I must say hia. So those of you who don't have a tamar pulta, don't worry. Your name is then feminine. Because feminine names are feminine. For example, if your name is Zainab, or what other name is? Give me some names with Atamar Buta. Amal. What else? Give me names. Where is it? No, no Tamar Buta people? Firdaus. Again, I said female names that don't have Tamar Buta are still feminine. Or, for example, Zainab. You with me? Because that, that just makes sense. No. Or a female title, for example, Ummun. What's Umm? Mother. You can't say Hua for your mother. Because she's a Hiya, she's a woman. It ends with a meme, but it's a female title. Or Ukhtun ends with an open ta, it's feminine. So I'll repeat the rule again. The default is that the word is masculine except number one if it has a female ending. And there's three female endings. You with me? Those three in red. Or if it's a feminine name, then it's also going to be female. Third category. You still with me? Dual body parts. Dual parts, it means a part of your body that you have two of in a normal human being. For example, yadun. What's yadun? And so normal human being has how many hands? Two hands. So, if a, so a dual body part, yadun, is female. For example, what ayinun, what's ayin? Ayn is your eye. You have a normal person has two, 
So Ain is going to be female. For example, Udun and what's Udun? Ear is going to be two. Rijal, foot, two feet is going to be two. So all dual body parts are also female. You with me? Dual body parts, female. Last one. The rule is the words are feminine except in this cases. I mean, I I generally what? Masculine except in the following cases. Feminine ending, feminine names and titles, dual body parts. Last one, deemed feminine. Deemed feminine just means that the Arabic language, for whatever re reason, just deems certain words female. There's no reason for it. It's just the way it's found. For example, the word narun. What's nar? Fire. Can you see it has no feminine ending? That's not a female name. It doesn't have a dual body part. Just nar is just in Arabic as feminine. Narun. So these are my just memorize. Narun. Darun. What's dar? A dar is a house. What's another word for house? Bait. So I'll tell you something. The word bait is masculine. The word dar is feminine. We're looking at the gender of a word. Not, you know what I mean? We're looking at the gender of a word. So the word bait, baitun, that word is masculine. But the word darun, that is feminine. Why? That's just how Arabic is. That's how we found it. We can't change it. They're always called dar or feminine. They always say here for dar and hua for bait. That's just how it is. Next one. Ardun. What's ard? Ard is the earth or a piece of land is ardun. Next one. Nafsun. What's nafs? Nafs could be your, your soul. Nafs could also be a person as well. A, a nafs is, a, is a, a person or it can mean a, a soul as well. Or it can mean self as well. Nafs. It's also feminine. Last one. Shamsun. What's shams? She must be the light of your life, that's why. She must be Shamsun, not Narun, eh? It's the wrong light. So Shamsun is also feminine. Qamarun is masculine, Shamsun is feminine. Okay. So that's the lesson today so far. Are you with me? If you look at the word, you must be able to think about it. Let's go to your worksheet quickly. The thing I explained to you now is in your Naho notes. Uh, this Naho, I'll just show it to you quickly. In this notes here, you can see there's the same slide. So in doing a worksheet now, you can refer to this to get some information, inshallah. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do, inshallah, is I'm going to ask you, we're going to inshallah take a break now for the, for the nikah. Uh, I think, I, I, I'm not sure how big the nikah is, but maybe we can just, uh, most of you can stay where you are, but maybe just the first two rows can maybe just uh, go to the back and give some space inshallah. The rest of you can probably just stay where you are inshallah. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, and then if you can, in, in, in the while they're having the nikah, you can listen to the nasiha inshallah, uh, enjoy the qira'ah. Uh, but at the same time, you can also complete this exercise. So in this exercise here, what you have to do is find out whether the word is masculine or feminine. What I'm going to ask you is don't put masculine or feminine here. I'm going to ask you to put what? Put mudhakkar or mu'annath. So you practice the Arabic. Put mudhakkar and mu'annath and then you're going to give a reason. You're going to give a reason. What are the reasons? That it, again, it might be a female ending. It might be a female name. It might be a dual body part, or it might be deemed feminine, inshallah. So inshallah, we hopefully will be back here at 10 to, inshallah. At 10 to. So uh, we'll ask the nikah people to come forward. If the first two rows can just step to the back, inshallah, and then we can give them some space, inshallah. Barakallah. We'll be back here at 10 to 10, inshallah.
Let's quickly summarize, inshallah. Are you back with me, yeah? Nikah has finished now, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. So, today's lesson was about how to recognize the, the gender of an ism. How to recognize the gender of an ism. How many gen gen genders are there? Two. What are their names again? Mudakkarun, male, and Mu'annathun. So, Mudakkarun and Mu'annathun. So, when you look at an ism, you should be able to find the, the name, find the gender, basically. So, we gave you a guideline. The guideline was that the default is that it is Mudakkar, masculine, except in these cases. So, the one case was a feminine ending. At the end of the word, it will either end with a tam or buta, especially. That's the main one. And sometimes with that dots and sometimes with that alif and that, and that hamza. Then of course female names, even if they end with none of those, they are still going to be feminine. Female names are feminine. And all dual body parts, feminine. And certain words in Arabic are just deemed feminine. So in summary, in summary, where we are now, you've learned three things about an, an ism, three things. First of all, you've learned that the uh, ism has a hal. What are the three hals? Raf'un, Nasbun, Jarrun. Then you learned that the ism has definiteness. What are the two, the two categories? Ma'arifa altogether. Ma'arifa and Nakira. And the third thing you learn now is gender. And obviously ma'arifa al, no tanween, and nakira, tanween. And what's the third thing? Gender. What's the gender? Let's do the male first. Mudhakkar and mu'annath. Main ones, tamar buta and some other ones. So, for example, if I have a, a word, al-madinata, al-madinata, you should be able to tell me three things about it. Number one, What's the hal? Al Madinata. Definiteness. Ma'arifa. And gender. Al Madinata. What is it? Mudakkar or Mu'annath? Mu'annath, feminine because of the Tamarbuta. Next one, if I have the word Baytun. Baytun. Number one, what's the hal? Raf'un. You with me? Raf'un. Number two, what's the definiteness? Nakira. No al tanween, nakira. And number three, what's the gender? Mudakkar or mu'annath? It's a mudakkar word. So you're telling me three things about it. So inshallah for homework, what you must do is you must complete last week's worksheet. Remember last week? Last week we left, we left out the last column. I think it worksheet 1.3, I think, I'm not sure. Worksheet 1.3, 1.4. So you must complete, no, 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 1.3, 1.4. You must complete the last column of 1.4, inshallah. Complete the last column of 1.4. And next thing you must do is you must complete 1.4 five as well for homework. So what does one point five tell you? One point five <coughs> You have the worksheet one point five? Do you have it? Should I have it somewhere. What you must do for one point five is you must write down each word in a blank sheet of paper, then you must tell me the three things. You must tell me like Al Mala Al Mulku. You must tell me three things, you must tell me the hal. What's the hal of Al Mulku? What's the hal of Al Mulku? Raf'un. Then you must tell me the definiteness. Ma'arifa. And the last thing. Gender. Al-Mulku Mudhakkar or Mu'annath? Mudhakkar. So what you must do is you must take this 1.5. Write out the words on a sheet. Then have three columns. And then write out the hal, the definiteness, and the gender. And write out the Arabic words. Why? Because after a while you don't get confused with the terms. So write the Arabic words. So you don't get confused between mudakkar and mu'annath and ma'rifa, all with memes, all becomes clear in your, in your mind, inshallah.
Good. What are we gonna? Okay, last two things. One thing first. Uh, dictionaries. Um, at some stage, you will require a dictionary. Now, the ease on the Android phone, if you have an Android like a Samsung or one of those kind of phones, the ease and app that you can get, you can get the dictionary on your phone, and it's searchable. So if you prefer to use the phone, you don't have to buy a dictionary because you can use a dictionary on your, your phone. In fact, I don't use a physical dictionary, I use the one on my, on my phone. So you can use a dictionary like that. Or you can even go into, if you go to our, if you go to our shared drive, there's actually a, fol a folder called Arabic English Dictionaries. So if you copy that whole thing onto your tablet or onto your laptop or onto your cell phone, and you open the one file, this double A uh, index file. If you open that, it will open like this. Let me just show you. It will open like this. So what do we have here? A dictionary on a, in a browser. And then what happens is, uh, this is actually nice because actually it's multiple English Arabic dictionaries here, quite a few of them, and you can search them. So uh, if I'm searching for, for any word, I can type in English or Arabic. Kasara, I can press enter and it will jump to that to that page. You with me? So you can download that. It's quite big, it's over, over two gigs, so make sure you're on Wi Fi and all this stuff. Okay. So, what I want to say is that you have the option to either use a dictionary on your phone, on your tablet, or on your laptop, or you have the option to buy a physical dictionary. The physical dictionary costs 165 Rand, but the, the stores don't have it because they're sold out, so we're placing an order. So if you'd like to place an order for a physical copy of dictionary, it's quite thick and big. Does anybody have one here? Hans here? Do you someone have one here? I can show them. Let me show them quickly. This is this copy. So if you want to place an order from this, you can place an order at the, the desk in shell. There's an order sheet there. That's 165 Rand. You can sorry? No, it just must be Hans here. Hans Weir, yes. Hans Weir. So you can either place an order for a physical one for 100, 165 Rand, or you can just use the app. Up to you. It's all the same thing, really. The app is a bit actually a bit easier because you can search it. This you must manually search. Sorry? The app is exactly the same like this. Okay. So you can choose, inshallah. So if whoever wants to place an order, you can do so at the desks at the back during the break time, inshallah. Last thing, last few minutes, inshallah. I want you to find your, your people, inshallah, make a group of between, let's say, five to seven people. Make a group first, and I'll tell you what to do, inshallah. Five to seven people. Then take out last week's page where we had the Hadha, Baytun, Hadha, Masjid. Don't take out the last week's page. Sisters in a group, inshallah, a, a circle. Circle, inshallah. You can't make a, a group in a row. Make circles, inshallah. Again, we're doing conversational Arabic, but with Quranic vocab. Conversational Arabic with Quranic vocab. So let's take out last week's sheet first. Last week's sheet. And we're taking out last week's sheet. I would like you to cover up the Arabic part. So here's last week's sheet. I want you to co cover up the Arabic. The pictures. The one that says number one, Mahada. I want everybody to participate, inshallah. Everybody, to don't no one sits alone. Join a group, inshallah. Look around you. Is anybody alone? Just call him to join your circle, inshallah. Look around you. So let's just read the first three together. Mahada, all together. Mahada, hada masjidun. Ma hada 
هذا بيت ما هذا هذا قلم okay stop there inshallah I want you to do it inshallah one person asks the next person ما هذا the next person answers and asks the next person ما هذا try to cover up the Arabic inshallah bismillah three rounds three rounds right around three rounds inshallah You can you can also put the shot also on the the people as well. With the other females on too. Um I'm gonna do that now, but in terms of the editing now. Um Uh, the now I'm going to answer, is, 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 is it the moon? It's the moon, yes. So I'm going to say yes. What's yes in Arabic? Naam. 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 Hatha qamarun. So let's read the first two lines together. Ahatha qamarun. Naam. Hatha qamarun. Again. Ahatha qamarun. Naam. Hatha qamarun. So I just said yes. This is a moon. Number two. Ahada together. Ahada baytun la hada ajurun. Mashallah. Again. Ahada baytun is a sahab. La hada ajurun. Next one. Ahada nurun. Naam. 
Hadha nurun. Next one. Hadha qalamun. La. Hadha kitabun. Next one. Hadha malun. La. Hadha sabilun. Next one. Hadha bahrun. La. Hadha malun. Next one. Hadha qalbun. Naam. Hadha qalbun. Next one. Hadha ajrun. La. Next one. Hadha adabun. La. Hadha bahrum. Next one. Hadha baytun. Naam. Hadha baytun. Next one. Hadha kitabun. La. Hadha adabun. Next one. Ahadha sabilun La Hadha qalamun Okay, go once around inshallah First person answers Answer question The next person responds And asks the next question again inshallah Bismillah One round quickly inshallah And say it with confidence Like you're an Arab yourself Like you're born in Arabia Say, Naam, Hadha Qamarun. Say it with some power, some confidence, inshallah. Don't whisper it. Oops. Okay, last one inshallah, last one. Next sheet. Number four. Practice at home, inshallah. Make sure it's fluent. Make sure you know the words. Practice with your family. Know the words, inshallah. Next sheet. Next sheet is called what? Ma hadhihi. All together. Ma hadhihi. Again. Ma hadhihi. What does ma mean? What? What did hadha mean? This. So, ma hadha meant what is this? Ma hadhihi means what is this? What's the difference? Hadha, listen carefully. Hadha is this for a male thing. And hadhihi is this for a female thing. So, all the words on, the, on this page here are all female things. So, you have to refer to it as hadhihi because only male or female. You with me? So no, no writing please, blank sheets, no pens, pens down, the vocab sheet is with you, no pens inshallah, I want the blank sheets here, because you want to go from Arabic, straight, no English in the middle inshallah. Number one, you see it together number one, ma hadhihi, again, ma hadhihi, answer, hadhihi ayatun, again, hadhihi ayatun. Okay, so what's an ayah? Don't write it down. You just remember it, inshallah. An ayah is either a verse 
or more accurately also it's a sign as well. So an ayah can be a sign in nature or a sign in your body or a sign or it could be a, a verse. Don't write it on your page please. I want this page blank. Not writing on this page. There is a vocab sheet. No, only no English on this page please. That's why the picture is there. The picture to the word inshallah. Next one, number two. Ma hadihi, answer. Hadihi jannatun. What's a jannah? A garden. Don't write. You can look at the picture. It's a garden in the picture there. Okay, you can see ayatun, jannatun ends with what? Tamarbuta, therefore ayah is feminine, jannah is feminine. Next one. Ma hadihi, hadihi sa'atun. A sa'a, uh, for now, a sa'a means an hour. An hour. Okay, an hour. Like the final hour, that is the sa'a. No English on the page, please. Again, that number, same one again. Ma hadihi, hadihi sa'atun. Next one. Ma hadihi, hadihi rahmatun. What's rahma? Love, mercy, compassion. Rahma. Don't write it down, inshallah. Next one. Ma hadihi, hadihi hayatun. Again. Ma hadihi, hadihi hayatun. Hayat means life. Hayat means life. You can see someone get growing up and becoming old. Hayat means life. So look at the picture and connect hayat to life in your mind. Don't write it down. Next one. Ma hadihi hadihi qaryatun. Again. Ma hadihi hadihi qaryatun. What's a qarya? A village. That's a village in the picture there. A qarya is a village. Oh, it's a mistake. You see the radha there? Let's check if you're awake there. That radha must be a hadihi. At radha, you can write there. It must be a hadihi. Because qarya is female. So I must say, this female. Qarya. Hadihi. Next one. All together. Ma hadihi hadihi qiyamatun. No writing, please. No English. Again. Ma hadihi hadihi qiyamatun. The problem if you write down English, your, your mind look at the English and not memorize the Arabic. If you leave it like this, your mind will be forced to say what is the Arabic. So qiyamah is what? Day of judgment. Judgment day. Day of resurrection. So the, the scale there is for qiyamah. Qiyamah, judgment, resurrection. Next one. Ma hadihi hadihi malaikatun again ma hadihi hadihi malaikatun what's malaika angels angels next one ma hadihi hadihi ardun what's ard earth or land can see all the previous ones malaika qiyama sa'a they all inu tamarbuta therefore they're female why is Ard female? As deem feminine. Deem feminine. Next one, inshallah. Ma hadihi hadihi nafsun. What's nafs? Okay. I couldn't find a picture for soul. So I just put soul there. I, couldn't, I gave up. <laughs> okay. Next one. Ma hadihi hadihi shamsun. What's shams? Sun. Why is it feminine? Deem feminine. Last one. ما هذه هذه سماء سماء skies or heavens. Why سماء? Can see the end of the female ending in Shallah. Same thing in Shallah. I want you to go around. No English. One person asks the next person ما هذه. Next person responds and asks the next person. Bismillah in Shallah. Go. Bismillah.
Uh, just a correction, inshallah, it's not hayatun, it's hayatun. So the alif is in the wrong place. The alif must come after the ya. Hayatun. No. Homework, inshallah, is to memorize all of these words. Practice it, memorize all of these words. The next page has a, a vocab sheet. So on the vocab sheet, I would like you to complete the blank right from memory. Do it from memory, inshallah. Ma hadi ayatun jannatun and so on. Complete it from memory, inshallah ta'ala. I want to have nasiha this week, it's a bit late, inshallah. So what we'll do is we'll give you a break until 22, inshallah. So we have an 11 minute break and 22 months of career will start with your period inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Next week Mount View inshallah. Mount View. Next week we're back at Mount View again inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.